What's up guys, Asan Malik back here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Summer 2018 LEGO Star Wars sets. But before we go ahead and take a look at these six brand new sets, I just want to issue an apology out to all of you guys that subscribe to me and expect videos on a regular basis. I know I haven't uploaded a video in like a month, and I am really sorry about that. I had a lot going on with school and my life in general, but that's no excuse. I really should have updated you guys or let you know what was going on, and I'm really sorry about that. But enough about me, let's go ahead and take a look at these sets. And we're going to start with the cheapest set in this wave and then make our way up to the most expensive. So we're going to be starting here with Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. This set is actually a remake of a set we got all the way back in 2008. It was 10 years ago. It was the first ever LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars set that we ever got. A lot of people did pick that set up, including myself. It was a really popular set. So that makes this set even more iconic. This is just a redo on that one. It looks a lot better now because, again, LEGO has progressed a lot over the past 10 years. Uh, the ship looks really great. It's a lot more gray than the last one. The last one was a lot more yellow. But this one does look a lot more accurate. I like how they designed the ship. It looks a little bit smaller to the front of it. But again, I'm still liking that whole new design they got here. This set also retails for $20, just like the last set as well, which is pretty cool that they actually were able to keep the price point the same over the course of 10 years. That's kind of surprising, even though this piece count has jumped up to 247 pieces. So I like the fact that LEGO did that. It makes it a lot more accessible and a lot more easy for a lot of other people to get their hands on this set. The minifigures here are pretty cool as well. We get Anakin Skywalker and R2-D2. Anakin is actually in his Clone Wars variant, except it's the new Clone Wars variant we're getting without those huge animated eyes that nobody really liked. Uh, so this figure is a lot better than the last one. I'm really glad that LEGO did this, especially with the new Clone Wars sets that we're getting nowadays. The print on the torso of the figure is also a little bit weird though. It does look a little bit too black in my opinion. From what I remember, it was supposed to be a little bit more brown, but nonetheless, it's still a great looking figure. He will also probably include an alternate face for this figure as well. We just can't see it in this image. But yeah, overall, it's a really iconic set, and I'm glad that LEGO is giving it to us again here in 2018. But that's enough for this Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. Let's get on to our next set here. And this is probably the worst set in this entire wave. This is the Hoth Medical Chamber. And I'm not really sure who is asking for this set. This set has been included in many different bigger sets. Like we got the Hoth Echo Base and the smaller Echo Base set as well. They all included this exact scene in those sets. And I don't know why LEGO went ahead and made this one. This exact scene from Star Wars is probably one of the most awkward scenes in Star Wars history. This is the scene where Leia kisses Luke. And it's really weird because they're siblings and they don't know it yet but then again when we watch Return of the Jedi and we learn that they're siblings it becomes a really awkward moment in Star Wars history and I really don't know why LEGO went ahead and made this set I'm not sure who was asking for it we've gotten back to Luke in many other sets and we've got this version of Hoth Leia in many other sets as well I don't know overall this is just a little strange set I'm not sure if many people will be picking this up I definitely don't recommend buying this one either unless you're just a really big fan of this scene but yeah that's pretty much gonna do for this set there's nothing really special going on here we do get four minifigures if you want to include that tower medical droid a figure as well and we do get some nice accessories like scissors and whatnot but yeah overall it's a really basic set i definitely recommend skipping out on this one unless you're a completionist who's trying to collect every single hoth base set they've made so far i definitely wouldn't recommend picking this one up but yeah overall it's a really small set let's just go ahead and skip on to the next one here and this is probably the most controversial set in this wave it is definitely one of the most anticipated sets as well this is snoke's throne room and the reason this is such a controversial set is because it's one of the most anticipated sets that LEGO has ever made. It's based on a really important scene from the movie. For those of you guys who haven't seen Star Wars The Last Jedi, I'd recommend leaving the video right now. We're going to get into a huge spoiler territory right now. But for those of you guys who have seen it, I'm sure you guys remember this scene. It is definitely my favorite scene in the movie. It was super awesome, super well choreographed. It was when Rey and Luke fight the Praetorian Guards and cut Snoke in half. So this is pretty much what this set is about. It's replicating that scene from the movie. And I am kind of disappointed with this set. I don't think LEGO did a really good job with this. Earlier in the year when we were getting all the pricing information and rumors about this set, we all got super anticipated for it because we thought it was going to be this super large thing when we saw that $70 price tag. But now that we actually have images of the set here, it is way smaller than I thought it would be, and it only has 492 pieces, which is really disappointing. It still only includes five minifigures, which is great, but three of those minifigures are not exclusive to this set, and we've gotten them in many other sets before. But those two other Praetorian guards here look fantastic. I think LEGO did a great job with those figures. But I still don't think that justifies a $70 price tag, and that's American dollars too, so for Canadians and other countries, your prices are going to vary. For me, it's going to be around $90, which is way too expensive for a set this size. 
The set itself is also not that great. The entire platform looks way too small. I thought it'd be a lot bigger because in the movie it's a lot bigger. It will include some play features though. As you can see, Snoke's throne here actually is removable. I'm guessing you can pop it off using that trigger on the back there. But it doesn't include anything involving cutting him in half. I don't really blame LEGO for that. I don't know how they would implement that using LEGO minifigures. That'd be really impossible to do. But yeah, overall it doesn't really look like it has that many play features as well. It looks a little bit empty. I'm guessing the elevator door can rotate using that knob up there. But overall the set looks very simple and it's way too small for this price. The only thing that really would make me want to buy this set are the Praetorian Guards. And that's just not enough considering it's $70, which is way too much. I'm definitely probably just going to buy these figures on Bricklink considering I already own Kylo Ren, Rey, and Snoke. Like I'm sure a lot of you guys already do. If you guys don't own those figures, then this might be a set to consider, even though it is kind of expensive. If you want to get all these figures at once, it's pretty, a pretty nice way to do it. So if you guys don't own those figures, I'd recommend doing that. But for those of you guys that do already own these figures, definitely don't buy this set. I mean, it's way too small. The price is way too high. And there's just nothing really to support the purchase of this set other than those Praetorian guards. I know it sounds like I'm bashing this set a lot and I don't really want to sound like I'm just hating on it completely. I was just really anticipating the set and I was super hyped up for it and I just think LEGO dropped the ball completely so I'm a little bit disappointed which is why I'm kind of lashing out at this set. But if you guys do enjoy this scene in the movie and you guys really want to pick it up I definitely recommend going ahead and pick this one up. This is just my opinion. But uh, yeah overall it's a pretty uh, decent set I guess that you could say it's just very poorly priced. And yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for Snoke's throne room. Let's get on to our next set here, which is the X-Wing for 2018. This set includes 731 pieces and retails for $80 US. So as pricing goes, this is exactly what we're expecting, considering the last couple X-Wings that we got were the exact same price as well. And I think it's a fair price, I guess you could say. I mean, the X-Wings are getting so detailed nowadays. There's so many little small pieces packed into these vehicles. It really just jacks up the price, which I actually am fine with. I mean, I'd rather pay a higher price. For, to get a more detailed and premium X-Wing. But the X-Wing itself does look pretty good. It's definitely the best regular version of the X-Wing that we've gotten so far. It is based off the one in A New Hope. The figures here are definitely the most exciting part about this set to me. The Rebel Pilots now have this new helmet mold, which has a visor on the helmet, which makes it way more accurate than having the visor printed on the face. I think it looks pretty cool. We get two different figures here, two Rebel Pilots. We get Biggs, Darklighter, and Luke Skywalker here in his A New Hope variant. Uh, we also have R2-D2 as one of the astromech droids, and I'm not sure which astromech droid that is. It does look very similar to the one that we got in the UCS Y-Wing just a couple months back. I think his name was... DDBD or something like that. If you guys know, make sure to go down in the comments below and let me know. But uh, yeah, the figures are pretty basic here. The X-Wing does look great. For those of you guys that don't own a LEGO Star Wars X-Wing, this is definitely one that I'd recommend picking up. I think LEGO did a good job with it. It's definitely the most accurate X-Wing that we've gotten so far. I might pick this one up as well, just considering it's a really iconic vehicle from the LEGO Star Wars franchise. But uh, yeah, overall it's a really basic set. Nothing too special in terms of play features. You're going to have the basic spring-loaded shooters and the ability to open up the S-foils into attack position. But yeah, overall it's a really good X-Wing. I definitely recommend picking this one up if you don't have it yet. And yeah, let's go on to our next set here, which is the Imperial Landing Craft. This is another set that's a remake of a set that we got a while back. I'm not sure what year that was. If you guys do know, make sure to go down in the comments below and let me know. This set includes 636 pieces and retails for $90, which might sound a little bit expensive, but it does actually have these really large pieces for these side pods here. You get four of those large pieces. So that's probably why the price point is a little bit high on this one. I still do think $90 is a little bit too high though. It definitely should be $80 or $70. $90 is just pushing that limit way too far. But looking at the actual build here, I only have a couple problems with this set. Starting with the back of the vehicle, I think these fins on the back that are folded up right now actually look a little bit too small. I definitely think they should be a little bit larger from what I remember how they look like in the movie. I could be wrong on that. These might be accurate, but from what I remember, it looked like in A New Hope. I think they were supposed to be a little bit larger. The front nose of the ship also looks a little bit strange in my opinion. As the designs for these Imperial shuttles go, this is probably one of the worst ones we've seen so far. There's just a lot of exposed studs here, and I'm just not really liking the look of it. I like it when they smooth out the entire front portion of the ship here and use the sides of bricks to make it a lot more smooth. Another problem I have with this set is actually with these side pods here. There is a small gap in between the two pods when they're closing, and that small gap just kind of throws it off for me. I'm not sure if it's supposed to actually look like that in the actual movie. I don't really remember what the pods actually look like. 
but I think it would have looked a lot better if it was completely closed off with bricks and would have been a nicer fit. But uh, overall, it's a really small flaw with the set. I'm kind of just nitpicking here. The ship is nice. It's just definitely a little bit more expensive than it really should be. It also has landing pads as well, which is pretty nice to see. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the figures in this set. So we get five different figures. We have R2-D2 again. He's making his rounds quite a bit in this wave of LEGO Star Wars sets. We get two Stormtroopers and an Imperial Officer and then Ben Kenobi. The Stormtroopers and all these other figures we've gotten in other sets. None of them are really exclusive here. I'm not sure if they actually have exclusive prints or not. I can't really tell from this image but I'm assuming they're not even if they are it's a small difference the older figures are just as accurate but this set actually may hold some nostalgic value for some of you guys that picked up the older version of this set so for those guys I definitely recommend picking this one up or if you just are really interested in this vehicle and in the set in general I'd recommend picking this one up even though I am not really interested in it but uh, yeah that's pretty much gonna do it for the Imperial landing craft let's get on to our last set for this wave here and this is definitely one of the most anticipated sets of this wave as well we have the new 2018 sand crawler it includes 1239 pieces and retails for $140 and I think it looks a pretty awesome I think for the size and the price they were working with here I think it looks really accurate and I think they did a great job with the vehicle it's really brown looking and there's not much details in terms of these smaller bricks they use like they use on the UCS model that one had many different shades of brown and it just looked very realistic and rusty they couldn't implement that here because they are working with a smaller scale which is completely okay I think it still looks really awesome I think like did a great job with the sand crawler definitely looks better than the last version that we got before the UCS sand crawler but yeah it's a really great set it actually will be able to open up and you're gonna be able to take this little track thing and move it up and down the ramp which is pretty nice to see as well for figures in the set we do get a nice assortment of figures here we get Luke Skywalker two Jawas and then we get a bunch of different droids uh, two of these droids we've gotten before, I'm not sure the name of that protocol droid. We get a rusted medical droid in the back, which is pretty nice to see. I definitely like this astromech droid. I like the color they went with here, this like tangerine type of orange. I think it's pretty unique. We don't really usually get colors like this on our astromech droids. So I'm glad that LEGO went ahead and included this unique looking one in this set here. But yeah, overall, it's a really nice set for those of you guys that haven't owned the old UCS Sandcrawler. I definitely recommend picking this one up. It looks really great. I think for the scale that they're working with here, they did a great job. And for those of you guys that don't own a Sandcrawler, this is definitely the way to go for this year. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this Sandcrawler. And that's pretty much going to do it for this entire wave of LEGO Star Wars sets for 2018. Before you guys go, make sure you go down in the comments below and let me know what you guys think about all these different sets. I think these sets are a little bit overpriced in my opinion, especially with Snoke's Throne Room, which is a huge letdown. The Imperial Transport is also a little bit overpriced. The sets in general are just a little bit overpriced, excluding Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. My favorite set in this wave is probably going to be Anakin's Jedi Starfighter, just because it has so much nostalgic value for me. I owned the last set, and it was one of the first, or the first, LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars set that I've ever gotten. So it holds a lot of nostalgic value for me. So that's going to be my favorite set for this wave. But make sure to let me know what your guys' favorite sets are in this wave. Let me know which ones you guys are planning to pick up as well. And yeah, so that's pretty much going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, make sure to hit that like button and to stay up to date on all the latest LEGO Star Wars news. Make sure to subscribe to my channel where I do a bunch of more videos just like this one. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.